There we go. Hello from North Korea. <laughs> hey, how are you? How are you guys? What's up? What's up, dog? Yeah, sorry I'm late. Sorry I'm late. Couldn't be helped. But I'm here, so this is going to be a, uh, what is it, uh, it's a Christian holiday today, right? So it's a Christian holiday, hey, hey, good vibes, how are you, Jovan? So I'm just going to wait for a decent number of people to get on, and then we will uh, get going. So you let me know if the audio is coming in, give me a thumbs up, or just say audio is good in the chat, I would appreciate it, I think it's good, but... Uh, yeah. What camera are you using? I am using something called the C200. Hey, from hello from Ottawa. How you doing? My father lives in Chelsea, and uh, several of my family members actually live in Ottawa. So I'm using this camera, if you want to see. And uh, guys, can you hear me? I think you can, but uh, just let me know. Uh, yeah, yeah, thumbs up. People are still loading up. Okay, what do we got? We got 50 people now, six thumbs up, good. Audio is good, all right, thank you. That's all I needed to know. So you had a question. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Why is this dark? That's no good. Uh, no. Yeah, I've been playing around with the software, so you're gonna have to, I apologize for it. Uh, let's see if I can fix that up, make it look good. Background. Uh, wait. All right. Is that going to work? Save. There we go. So we can see this a bit better now. The comments. One of the main reasons I use this software is because this I can have the comments pop up like that, which is kind of cool. All right. So let me see if I can get back to that question again. Uh, here it is. First question, sorry, I ask, but what's the exact approach to learning Python? Well, I am biased. Just do the Studio Web Python course. You're going you're gonna to learn your Python very quickly. One of the key, that being said, one of the key parameters to learning how to code is you want to start writing code as quickly as possible. Simple little snippets of code where you, you'd be amazed at how much of an impact typing out code is gonna have in terms of your ability to learn and comprehend. So you have to type out the code. Don't make the mistake I made years and years ago, decades ago in fact, where I tried to become a theoretical master of the languages before actually writing code. It doesn't work that way. You gotta write code right away. You'd be amazed how much an, imp an impact it is, you, it is on your learning speed and how easily you learn when you actually sit there and you write code you make mistakes, you see the mistakes, you break your code, you come back again. So that is my advice in that regard. All right? So how many people are we at? We're at 73 people already. So um, I'm working out this whole live thing. I'm going to do this on a regular basis, as you can tell, and uh, invested in the software, etc. I think I'm going to maybe reduce it to maybe 30 minutes as opposed to 50 minutes. We'll see. But uh, and I'm going to try to set a time. I'm going to put out a survey over the next over the weekend on the YouTube channel, and I'm going to set times and see what time is most favored by most people. So every day or every other day, depending on what my schedule is going to be like, I will have a time where you can count on me showing up. Okay. So look at let's look at some more. The drops are still dropping through though. Yeah, that's just the volume. Hold on a second. I haven't figured out, you know what, I haven't looked too hard to figure that out, but let me just shut that off, hold on. I will mute the output. There we go, so we shouldn't get no more drops. Yeah, um, 
what I'll do is I'm going to look, see, there's got to be a way to I can shut this off with the software, so we'll see. Okay, here we go. All right, let me just center this. Uh, dating questions, Stefan. 23-year-old man, never been with a girl, feels like my life is over, been way too focused on school and work, feels like it's too late, and all the girls will hate a virgin. Uh, no, 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 no. You're 23, dude, dude. I, I tell people, I would give away everything I have to be 23 again, okay? So number one. Uh, number two, um, if you want to be desirable to the opposite sex, become desirable. Uh, get in shape, uh, learn to communicate well, um, work on your job, work on your, your skills. Uh, women will appreciate men who actually are working towards something. Even if, even just having... Uh, aspirations is very attractive to younger girls. At my age, you better not. You better have. You better have more than just aspirations. But at your age, just having aspirations is enough. So, uh, don't worry. You're still very young. Just do as I suggest, and you'll be. Uh, you have women knocking on your door. Don't chase the women. Make yourself a reason for women to chase you, and you'll be fine. I can guarantee that. There you go. JavaScript makes you desirable, 100%, 100%. Uh, <laughs> all right, hi from Berlin, hello, hello. This is one of the things I love about uh, doing these live chats is I'm talking to people. We're actually interacting in this, group, in this group with people all over the world. I see a symbol. Yeah, that's a symbol. So, um, Okay, let's see. I had a subject, actually. So let's just jump into the subject, and I'll get back to the Q&A since we hit 100 people now. And it's basically, I have a, a huge collection of questions that people have sent me, and I would put them aside, say, hey, I'm going to answer these questions. I'll eventually do a video. And, you know, they just, they got so many. I'm back. I'm out of February, by the way. I was able to go through all my emails, and I took care of all the February emails. So I'm now into March. So I'm making, I'm making progress with my emails. So let me jump into this right here. There we go. So I hope you guys can see this. We'll zoom this in. So this is a question I got. Uh, I'll get this out of the way here. So hi, Steph. I am not getting on with Python as it appears to be a language that is used mainly for fintech and data analysis in my part of the country. It looks like I will just continue with my web development for the months to come. I'll comment on that in a second. I have a few questions for you. Number one, what do you think of Swift? Swift, the programming language, which is used for iOS. Pretty much, well, it's used a little bit on the server side, but mostly iOS. He continues, I have read that it's meant to be an easy language to learn. It is. Uh, Swift was uh, Apple's uh, response to Objective C, meaning Objective C was the language which you could use to build Apple apps for iOS and for macOS, and they said we needed something more modern. Objective C is kind of an old school language. Anyway, we'll get into that. So yeah, Swift is easier to learn, and it's quite a powerful language. Uh, number two, what do you think is going to be easier to learn, JavaScript or Swift? You know, it's very hard to say. I think they're both equal. I think um, JavaScript's got some weird behavior about it. It's kind of some inconsistencies um, that could trip people up, but it's not hugely difficult. Uh, but I'll get back to this in a second. Number three, do you use Swift? I've only played around with Swift. I have not programmed in Swift commercially because I don't write iOS apps. I don't write native. I was very interested in Swift for a... Um, an IBM project that they had put out a while back, but they had shut it down. Basically, IBM had ported Swift to the back end, to the server, and uh, Swift is, is such a well-engineered language that it runs circles around just about any other language except for C++ at runtime. But um, uh, what was the project called? Katero, I think it is. I forget. Anyway, IBM shut it down. They, they're out of it. It's still around, but it's, you know, one thing I've learned over the years, when you evaluate technology, you have to always, you can't just evaluate the merits of the language in of itself. You have to evaluate the ecosystem around it, the support around it, uh, the market share around it. Now, the problem with Swift on the server, uh, since IBM is pulling out, that tells you that, and they basically, the ones who pioneered that stuff, 
you know it's not going to go anywhere. So, you know, that's the, the problem with that. Um, so uh, let me address a few questions. Yeah, Python in his country is fintech and data analysis. That could very well be. Python is like, it's the number one or two most popular languages in the world. But a lot of it's in data sciences. A lot of it is in um, AI. Uh, although Python's used qu quite a bit in the web development and, and server automation and so forth. If I had to choose between Swift or Python, I'd actually go with Python personally. Personally, if you're into freelance, I would go JavaScript, uh, HTML5, CSS3, web stack, and freelance would probably be PHP. But you could do it with Python, but more opportunity with PHP. So there you go. I hope that I, that question I think was sent to me in March or so, early March or February. I don't know when. A long time ago. So it is now answered. So there we go. That's it. That was the main point of. Uh, the vlog today. So now I'm just going to answer a bunch of questions f for you guys. Um, uh, let's see what we got here. Let's see. Uh, Madi Al Jalil. I don't know if I pronounced that properly. Can we use C sharp for front end? Um, yeah, you know, with uh, .NET, it wouldn't be like front end processing. It would be server side, but it would render front end view. So. Uh, no, it's not a front-end language. Technically, it's not a front-end language, but if you're doing uh, ASP.NET, you're using C Sharp, it will render out your front-end, but it's not a front-end language. Mm -hmm. All right, next question. Here we go. Agha Roshan Khan. Is it possible to go for web development and cybersecurity? Which one to do first? I would go web development. More opportunity there in terms of jobs. I'm very job-centric, but... Check out, dabble in a bit of both after you do your foundations of code, and you may find you prefer cybersecurity. And um, you probably could find a lot of jobs there, but I think long terms is, uh, I would go with the web stack, personally. Ali Azi, it's, it usually takes me 10 times more coding making some math routines in JavaScript than Python, but I like to tease the Python users anyway. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's one of the big power of Python. It's because it's so often used in academics. It has a tremendous set of libraries. That's one of its power. Like in terms of like flexibility, it has a huge set of libraries. They call modules. And it has tremendous uh, math libraries. So Neil Clay says Django is growing. I wouldn't doubt it, right? So if you've got all these people jumping into Python for data science or server automation or um, AI, and they want to go to the web because you're going to go to the web at some point or another. I can see that they would naturally want to progress into Django. So I think that uh, because of Python's massive base, you're probably going to see Python uh, growing in the web stack as well. I wouldn't be surprised. Ral Springer, who is your favorite boxer of all time? That's a really good question. That's a really good question. You know... Some of the most exciting fights I saw were with Mike Tyson, uh, Roy Jones Jr. Uh, you know, those those two jump up in, in my mind. Uh, very fun to watch. Very fun to watch. I also like watching um, what's his name? I forget his name. Also, heavyweight. I like watching of all people um, uh, George Foreman. George Foreman. Uh, unusual style fighter. So those are my top three, I would, I would guess. Uh, let's see what we got here. Flutter is recommendable versus Swift. Is that a question or a statement? Depends on the type of work that you do. But generally speaking, I am for using uh, products like Flutter. I like cross-platform solutions for mobile development. Uh, well, what do we got here? Let's keep going. Uh, what do you think about React Native? I hear good things about it. A good friend of mine has done a bunch of React Native. He likes it. Uh, it's one of, if you don't know, React Native is a basically cross, a cross platform solution to allow you to develop uh, native apps using uh, a JavaScript based library. Apparently, it works very well. Like everything, like everything else, there are pros and cons. So you have to just look at it depending on the particular project. Mm, let's see what he says. So, BK Pro 24 says you can use Python for pretty much anything. It is very versatile. Indeed, that is Python's power. 
It's that it's so versatile. That if you're going to name any one particular thing, it's its versatility. Um, people like to cite that it's easy to learn. Yeah, but I think if you have a decent course, you can learn just about any language, any of the high-level languages, JavaScript, Python, PHP, uh, not Ruby. Um, all, they're all pretty approachable languages, uh, I would say. But, you know, I think its greatest strength, though, all that said and done, is its versatility is tremendous. So what else do we have here? There we go. Miguel. Uh, how would you identify a good opportunity for SaaS if you don't have a domain knowledge? Um, the key is to get the domain knowledge, you know. I think you have to be like a detective if you're not in a particular uh, field where you have domain knowledge yourself. But you have to be a detective and you start talking to people in a particular uh, field. Uh, maybe talk to people who own restaurants, people who talk to people who are butchers, talk to people who own uh, independent uh, garages, you know, start talking to them and they'll know what they need or what they could or what they would like with regards to uh, software. That's how I would do it personally, because the mistake that people make, young entrepreneurs make and older entrepreneurs make is they look at something that uh, they look at an industry or they look at something that's new to them and they assume that they see an opportunity. But when you're new to an industry, everything is new to you. So your ability to judge what's actually going to be viable, what's going to be niche is uh, very, uh, is very un it's, not, it's not likely. I wouldn't do it. Mm. Common question, how long did it take you to become a developer? I answered this yesterday. I want to abridge this. Now, I said I started to code in my early 20s. I actually started to code when I was 14 years old. I was writing BASIC on, I think it was called a TR-99. I was doing simple little things like bouncing ball animations and crap like that. But I, I really started to write commercial code, making money or being paid to code in my 20s. So that's a more uh, accurate. And how long did it take me? Well, when I first wrote my first website for my business, it's, you know, it, it got us contracts. So you know, I learned how to code and in fact, in effect, was earning money writing code since I was building a website that was getting us contracts. Um, uh, let's see what we got. Okay, let's see what this guy, JF, what's JF have to say? Hi, Stefan, I love Python, C Sharp. However, I am hesitant, very hesitant about prioritizing one of these. I see C Sharp as safer, I, I see C Sharp as a safer bet in the future. What do you think? I think both languages are fantastic. I think both languages are very, very safe in the future. Um, if you go for either one, you'll be fine. Choose the one where the money is. Follow the money. One of my mentors, he ran a $50 million per annum company, I used to, chicken company. I used to call them 50 million chickens. And 50 million chickens used to tell me, uh, when it comes to business, and applies to this coding, whatever, he said, you got all kinds of opportunities out there, tons of opportunities. So the one to choose is the one that where the money is, right? That's what you want to do. Follow the money. Now, caveat in terms of being a developer, follow the money plus what you want to do. You don't want to be coding in something that bores you to tears or you hate, right? All right. Well, Haytham uh, Marufi, if I hope I pronounced that right. I am I am hesitant between data science and software development. What will you do in each one? Hmm. Well, data science, you have to be a data scientist. Uh, I assume you're probably in school. So check into that. Um, software development is a different game. There's more flexibility with software development. Much more flexibility in terms of jobs. You can start a business. Uh, much easier. Um, Pragmatic reviews. What do you what do you think about TDD test driven development? Would you apply? Yes, only after I have um, I'm past alpha stages, beta beta stages uh, of the code. That's what I would. Uh, that's when I do TDD. Not in the early stages because um, simply because the code base is just changing so radically as you uh, in when you're in alpha, you're in the very early stages of development. Okay, let's uh, hold on. Victor Ray, Stefan, how about Node.js future? Yeah, yeah, it's not going anywhere. Big players like like um, Netflix use it. 
you're fine with Node. Node, when see, when you got technologies like Node, PHP, uh, Python, uh, C Sharp, uh, .NET Stack, Java, uh, even not Ruby, uh, it, it gets to a point where they're so big, like WordPress on this kind of, it's not quite coding, but they're so big, but they're not going to go anywhere for, for forever, right? It's not in our careers. I don't think uh, there's a problem. Yes, Node is one of the, the superstars, right? Node is one of the superstars. I don't think it would be number one, but it doesn't need to be number one. If it's in the top five, you're fine, you know? All right, what's Tom Jan say? Advice for 20-year-old. Uh, to be 20 again. I'm jealous of you, Tom. Very jealous. What I would uh, do is I would be learning, 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 develop habits, start have develop habits of saving too, saving, try to save 10% of what you earn, uh, whenever you earn and slowly bump it up to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50% because 20 year old, next thing you know, you'll be 30 year old. And if you implemented a good savings strategy along with F you money, you'll be in a very good position and just keep learning and get out there in the real world and don't be afraid to make mistakes because, because uh, when you're young, that's the time to make mistakes. All right. So just be fearless. Be fearless. At 20, be fearless. All right. I, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Blasi Spiriski. I don't know. I pro, I'm sure I did that wrong. Okay. Let me just read this. Steph, how do you know if you have a natural talent for programming? How can you get precisely measure that level of talent or anti talent? And does programming get easier over time? If so, when? Good question. Programming does get uh, easier over time, like anything else. There's different types of programming. So you may be super good at, uh, you know, uh, system level code, dare I say algorithm coding, and that may be your strength. Or you may be better at front end development. You may be somebody who's very good with React, or you may find yourself really good with databases. So you have to explore the foundations of coding and dabble so you start figuring out what you're good at it's kind of like a fighter in boxing you got two different types of fighters you've got the inside fighter who's this who, who's a, who dances around jabs like muhammad ali or uh floyd Mayweather, and you got the inside type of fighter i don't know like uh i don't know james tony or something or um but anyway you get the idea so you got two different types of fighters and the key to becoming a great fighter is to figure out where your natural talent lies. So you figure that out by getting in the ring and doing things and trying different things out. So for me, boxing, I was an outside fighter. I can stick and hit hard. Inside, not so good. Or MMA, sometimes you're better at the ground. Sometimes you're better you know, uh, takedowns. Uh, sometimes you're better at submissions. Sometimes you're better at stand-up. So you have to figure out where your strength lies and concentrate on that. Same thing with development. You got to figure out where your strength lies. You may find yourself, you're even much better as just an architect, or maybe you know, as, and and you're better at communicating, creating that bridge between the suits, the, you know, the business people who are paying for the code to get written, and the nerds. So you have to experiment. Just experiment, and you figure that out. We all have talents of different degrees, right? And you just got to figure out where you're good, and uh, then I would say run with that. Now here's the thing about talent. If you're talented at something, people who are talented at something, and everybody's got some talent somewhere, uh, they tend to take whatever they're talented at for granted because it's easy for you. So you figure if it's easy for me, it must be just easy. But a lot of times I've seen people who are really talented at something, but because it's so easy, they just didn't take themselves seriously in that regard, which is, you know, whereas everybody else would marvel at how easy it was for them. So try to keep that in mind. I hope that helps. All right. Uh, let's see. Any thoughts on age discrimination tech industry? It is definitely there. So if you are older, you're probably not going to get a job of a startup unless you got really super talent or super domain knowledge. Like friends of mine, former Studio Web student, he has a startup now. Google's invested with them. They just finished their last round. They raised seven and a half million. They're in the tech ed industry. And they hired some older guys, one or two older guys, to handle some back office stuff. Not necessarily tech, but they're in a tech industry. But his job was this guy, this older guy, highly experienced guy in his 50s, 
uh, for his experience, I think with security and just managing people and so forth. So it, it's doable, but uh, generally speaking, if you're all older and you want to get into code and tech, I would, I'd be looking to freelance small business development. You, you, want to, you don't want to be working for a startup anyway. It's, uh, it's, uh, they, they, beat bo pe they, beat people, they beat people over the head, apparently, in those environments. Not all the case, not all the time. Like, uh, but uh, startup is kind of hectic versus like working for a large business. Might get a job working for a very large organization as well. Uh, let's see what we got. What stuff are you not allowed to tell us on here regarding freelance? <laughs> well, I can't tell you. All right, next. Uh, C sharp might be C sharp might get at might get added to the front end through Blazor or if WebAssembly becomes a thing. You know what? Now that I think about it, I remember hearing something about that, but I'm, I would have to look it up to give me give you my opinion. Um, that, you know, that's the, if that happens, when it happens, see what happens and decide whether or not, uh, whether or not it, it's worth it to you to do. So let's go with Sebastian, see what Sebastian, no, that's not Sebastian, hello, Ritik Kumar, hello, hello, I'll try Sebastian, here we go. All right, Sebastian says, I have picked C Sharp as my first language to learn. Will it come handy in the future to have solid bases of programming architecture, memory allocation? If you do that type of low-level programming, what I mean low-level, here's your CPU, your processor, and here's like uh, the operating system and apps and uh, web browsers. And the lower level of the language, the more you're coding to speak directly to the CPU. So you have like assembler, I think, on the first, and then you got C. You got machine language, assembler, and you got C. So the closer you are, the more control you have and the more efficient your code can be, the faster it will be, the less uh, resources, less CPU it requires, less memory it requires, but it takes a lot of code to get anything done. So if you're writing C code, you're probably writing controllers for microphones or for mice or something or frigidaires, or, you know, for devices that require very efficient code. But if you want, if you want to get into uh, more application development, you want to develop apps that are more front-facing, meaning people are going to be interacting with your stuff through GUI or something, then you want to get away from C. Because, uh, any, by the way, any language you learn, there's benefit. But in terms of memory management and all that low-level stuff that you have to take care of with C, you don't have to take care of that with higher-level languages like Python and JavaScript and Swift, et cetera. So it depends on the type of coding you want to do. But uh, you can't lose learning any language. Okay, let's see what we got. Marius Brumer, let's see what he has to say. Hi from South Africa, just a comment. I wrote a C program, it was 150 plus lines, wrote the same program in Python, it was only 11 lines. There you go, that's the point I'm trying to make. Um, you know, one less than 10% of the amount of lines of code and you get it done in Python. It's like something I cited in a pre, I was, Something I mentioned in a previous video a while back, I was listening to a vlog by a top AI guy. And he said that um, what they do now is they have the core engine in C or C++ for speed for an AI engine. But everything else around it is Python because they're able to iterate and develop their, uh, their application so much more quickly by doing it that way. So Python can, can talk directly to C. Uh, C libraries very quickly, right within Python. So when they have to do something that's really memory intensive, requires a lot of speed to process, they would just hand that off to that, that kernel, if you will, that center of their code base, which is C. So there's always, um, uh, there's a mixing matching, if you will. They're using multiple languages in, a, in an application space. Again, that's why I keep, that's one of the reasons I keep saying to people, the language doesn't, matter in the long run or even the medium term because in, you'll find in commercial work you're going to be using many different languages and learning new stuff on on the fly depending on what you need to do all right i think this is one of the best comments here smash that like button yeah okay that's the 47 come on guys we're at 176 people let's go how many where are we we're in on 30 minutes all right so a lot of time flies all right let's see what else we got all right Andrew says, seven years ago, I left Java Spring in favor of Ruby plus Rails. At that time, I heard that Python Django is lame. How that happened, 
that now Python Django again is more popular than Ruby Rails. Well, I was going to make, I won't make any more Ruby jokes. I think it's because Python is used in so many different areas. As I mentioned earlier in this uh, broadcast, there's so many different applications for Python. Thanks for the likes, guys. I saw a huge pew with the 60 likes real quick. That's good. Um, what I was going to say, yeah, yeah, Python, why Python grow, not Rails? Uh, it's because of Python's flexibility, because of Python's use in all kinds of different areas. Um, it just has a huge set of libraries, and that's pretty much what it comes down to at the end, end of the day. Um, I actually, you know, between Python's, the way they define code blocks and the way Ruby does it, I actually prefer the way Ruby does it. I don't like using white space and so forth. But that's just my personal taste. Uh, but with Ruby, though it's very eloquent, eloquent in terms of the fact, you know, everything is an object and there's a lot of, uh, what's the word, for lack of better terms, implications in Ruby, it, it becomes a little bit hidden. So I prefer a more explicit language so that you see what's going on right in front of you. All right, let's continue. Okay, so pragmatic. What's going on here? Pragmatic Reviews says, makes sense, thanks. I'm glad it could help. I forget what the question was. Um, hmm. What is the best website to start freelance? You know, I don't know, but what I would suggest, just try different ones. Uh, check out different ones. See how it affects you in terms of geography. Uh, you may find that, you know, if you're in France, maybe freelance.com is better. If you're in India, maybe one, another freelance site is better. I don't know. But I would also suggest that you check out local companies. Just go to Google Maps and reach out to them and offer a first couple for free. Uh, if you get local, it's always better, I think. Although when you do, if you do the online route, pick one and then develop a reputation there. And what I've heard from people is that you start off, you may get low-ball gigs, which is normal, by the way. Low-ball gigs means you're going to get jobs where they don't they pay terrible or they don't pay at all. That's okay. You develop rep, do a couple of quick little gigs, and once you develop some reputation, then you will see that people will be willing to pay your fair rates uh, for sure. Because if somebody's serious about their business, they don't want to try and nickel-dime people. They just want to get the product out. Um, I'm scrolling down here. Oof, so many comments, so many comments. Um, somebody wrote Stefan 1389 he wrote in a language I do not understand so I'm sorry about that uh, okay hold on so starting boot camp at 53 is not such a good idea no no I, I'm not big on boot camps to begin with I would do some online courses whether you do mine or you do somebody else's before you start spending a huge amount of money on boot camps. Because if you got a good online course, you got a bit of discipline, I imagine in 53 that you do, you could probably get to where you want to get for a small, tiny fraction. Why spend 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 on a boot camp when you can train, you know, I mean, I'm self promoting here with me for like 50 bucks, you know? It's, uh, and you can get very far very quickly. So I would, don't, don't, don't not do it. Because I know people keep coding into their 50s and 60s, and they just enjoy what they do. All right. Bartho KR, let's see. Is Python a good choice for web development? Yes. What would be better picking between Python or PHP? If you want to do freelance, probably PHP. Both are really good, though. You can't lose. PHP, though, you're doing, you're doing uh, web development, maybe WordPress, Drupal, but you're doing the web. Python, you have a lot more opportunities. You can do web and uh, server-side scripting, yada, 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 yada. Bo both are good choices, though. Do both. Why not? <laughs> I have to put this. Good programmers just start a YouTube channel. You know, people who know my story, I just started the YouTube channel just to learn how to speak in front of the camera. That was my main motivation, really. And... Uh, and it became a hobby. I just enjoyed doing it. It's a lot of fun, to be honest with you. And I have to admit, though, it's been a very good for me in terms of marketing. Um, that was kind of like a side effect, you know. But, you know, do it if you like it, you know. 
as I said, one of the most important skills you can have as an individual is good communication skills. So that's why I said when I started YouTube, I'm going to do one video a day for one year. And uh, so that's a few years ago. All right, we'll see what this guy has to say here. Abdurruf Wani. I'm sorry, I, I'm sure I didn't pronounce that properly, but I tried. When I start building my own portfolio app as a front-end developer, I know CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. I'm, he's asking me if you should. Why not do it? What I would do is I would put up a website that's clean and nice, then approach local little companies and say, I'm going to do your stuff for free. Trial by fire. You're going to learn that working with a real client who's giving you feedback and you're trying to figure out what they want and trying to figure out problem, you're basically problem solving as you develop whatever they want to develop, you're going to learn so much more quickly than you would with any tutorial online. Okay, I'm going to do it again. 80 likes, 187 viewers. Some people out there are slacking on the liking. The thumbs up. Um, I, I'm asking because apparently the more thumbs up I get, the more people, more YouTube will say, hey, this is a pretty good video here. And the more YouTube says my videos are good, the more people watch, the more likely I'm going to do live streams. Um, okay, let's go here. Mohammed Yassin. Do you think it is better to start web development with PHP to understand the basics? I recommend that. That's my choice. Um, why? Because web development is the easiest way to uh, to get into freelance. And so, you know, why not make money while you're developing your skills? That's that's just me. You know. All right. Do you think it's necessary to have high soft skills in e-commerce and digital marketing? Better. Always better have soft skills. Uh, Related to that guy who's looking to get a date, having good soft skills, spoken skills, communication skills is going to help you uh, meet women too. So that's a good advice right there. So it makes you money and gets you women. So yes, I would work on soft skills if you can. At least writing well and communicating well so that you could discuss requirements with your uh, clients. Yeah. Let's see. Philippe Lorenzo he says, me too. I prefer books. Well, I learned a lot. You know, I used to spend between three to four thousand dollars per year on technology programming books back in the day. I'm telling you, these thick books. I literally read hundreds and hundreds of books because I used to be an insomniac, and I and I learned I learned a ton. I learned a ton. This was before the age of video, web video for education. I was one of the first out there with my 2003, my very first web design course called Web Design One, original title. Anyway. Connor the Tapper says, where are you from originally? Right here, Montreal, Canada. Montreal, Canada. I've lived in and around Montreal and a little bit up north in the surrounding cities. I played around with ideas moving to other places in the States, but Montreal is a cool city. It's a cool city. Lots of good food, so it keeps me around. Mm, Python was and is and will be a scripting language and a glue language that allows programmers to extend core software and add functionality. That is a fair assessment of a language, but it's also used for a lot of dedicated apps. I heard some major video games are created with Python, much to my surprise. It's a great language. It's a great tool set. It's like, it's like having a, a handy little tool there to learn Python. That's why it's one of the three programming languages that I teach. I teach Python, I teach JavaScript, and I teach PHP because I feel that they're all very, very cool languages. All right, what do we got here? Daniel Gomez, Stefan, Lafalad, I do have one more question. How much vanilla JS do I need to learn before I can switch to React.js? I'm really excited to learn React. Just finish my JavaScript course and then you're ready to go with React, all right? Philippe, already liked. Thank you. Okay, we're up to 108. I have 193 watching. Okay, there's like there's like 80 slackers out there who have not liked it. Uh, so, uh, okay, let's go. Let's go to the next one here. Hmm. Alpha Delta. Hey, Stefan, Andrew here. I have a professor who says that maintaining legacy code, COBOL, for instance, is one of the best playing, it's one of the best paying careers right out of high school. Thoughts? He is correct. Like there was, I talked about in yesterday's uh, video. I talked about it how all these U.S. states they're they're looking for COBOL programmers. They, they can't find any of them. They have systems that are like 40, 50 years old, and they need COBOL programmers. So COBOL programmers, if people want to do it, they make a ton of money because all the program 
all the COBOL programmers have all retired. Young nerdlings are all worried about React and Node and, uh, uh, and Dart and all these new technologies. Meanwhile, you got all these jobs in Node, that's in, in COBOL rather, you know, and there's all these jobs in WordPress, all these jobs in PHP, all these jobs in uh, even Ruby, all these jobs, you know. <laughs> yeah, COBOL, there's a lot of jobs. If you want to do that kind of work, it's mainframe work, by the way. I've never done it, but a uh, ton of work there. Uh, why do you always talk about coding and never code? Because I got dozens of videos online where I'm writing JavaScript and Python and HTML, CSS. I, you know, I got hundreds of video lessons in my courses where I'm teaching people how to code. What, one, but one of the main reasons I don't do that on YouTube is because there's a plethora of young nerdlings writing code, doing the same, the shopping carts, and uh, the Twitter clones, and whatever, uh, consuming Google Maps. There's tons of videos of people doing that kind of stuff. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna bring something different. I'll bring my decades of experience to the game, uh, rather than writing code that you can see on, on, on a plethora of other YouTube videos, that's all. But if you wanna see me code, there are a bunch of videos in YouTube and some of the play playlists. Albeit, it's a lot of bit, albeit, I think it's the, all the beginner stuff. But if you want to get into from beginner to inter, high intermediate level in terms of code, you can check out my courses. There's literally hundreds there in Studio Web. Uh, here we go. What do you think about the future of Vue.js? I am not sure if it's just me, but I've noticed more employers asking for that skill set recently. Thank you, Calvin, for pointing that out. Now people know who have been following me uh, what, what, a year or so ago. To be longer, I forget now. I said Vue.js is the one is what is the JavaScript framework to look at, and I did. And here we go. It's starting to come out. I liked. I just looked at React, Vue, Angular, and I just liked Vue. I thought it was a good uh, implementation of a JavaScript library. So yeah, Vue.js has got a strong future. Uh, Laravel is packaged Laravel, which is the most popular PHP framework in the world, MVC framework, full stack framework, uh, which means it's the most one of the most popular frameworks in the world, simply because it's you know it's PHP, and it has Laravel embedded. Uh, so, and the guy who manages and maintains Laravel, he's he's a smart cookie. So if he puts something in there, it's probably good. It's probably good. So let me scroll down a bit more. How are we doing for time here? All right, I got thumbs down, fantastic. Okay, time, 42 minutes, all right. We're gonna be finishing off pretty soon because my mouth is getting pretty dry here. Uh, here we go. Do you think jQuery is useful in 2020? I would refrain from actively using it. You're gonna see jQuery is used with Bootstrap, for example, and some backend stuff, but I would lean away from jQuery. Uh, I would use uh, a vanilla or JS, or I would use, uh, Excuse me, I would use, uh, you know, more modern technology stacks. It's still out there, you know. Um, hold on. I feel like I'll need to relocate for a good paying freelance roles. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's like you can just use one of these sites and start developing remote relationships, you know. The ideal situation is to be in a part of the world that you like where the cost of living is low and then you you develop an awesome online reputation then you start making the big money from people in, who are living who happen to be in new york or uh, uh, florida or uh, you know california or wherever high value areas so you can make the big money while living in an area with a very inexpensive lifestyle somebody actually commented on that i don't know could be a month ago two months ago he, he talked about he lived in the middle of the u.s you know, where he could buy a house for 60 grand, but he was making like 150 or whatever it was a year. So he's making triple, well, not quite, but almost triple what it cost him to buy a house where he lived. That, that's a, the ideal situation, right? It's the ideal situation. Um, the, the UN says, Stefan, you recommend building sites for local businesses. Does it mean I'd better build it under WordPress? Because it takes less time to build sites under WordPress. Depends on the project, depends on the budget. You gotta feel that out. That's why I keep suggesting people, you gotta get out there and work with real people, real businesses, because it's gonna help you to understand 
uh, how to make technologies choices, whether to use WordPress as an example, or whether to use uh, a proper web framework like uh, a Laravel or a Django. All right, let's see what John Don says. Really enjoying this podcast so far. Thanks for sharing the hard-earned wisdom. Uh, not a problem, man. I, I have a good time with this. All right, two thumbs down. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. 127 thumbs up and 50 slackers. Okay, let's see what else we got here. All right, we'll go with Thomas, Thomas Fedor. What do you think now with this world crisis, how much harder is it to get a job as a self-taught Python developer? I think this, this um, crisis is temporary. I think this crisis is going to cause people to start looking to technology to start creating uh, more, to make it easier rather for businesses and people to work remotely, which means more and more technology skills are going to become more valuable. So I think that the silver lining to this whole Corona thing, we're going to start seeing huge boom. I think especially in the developed world, you're going to see a huge boom. Uh, I would I'm very optimistic of the future. So it's uh, it's like, like we're like with the corona, it's almost like we're rebooting the system. You know, sometimes the computer gets a little slow. You got to reboot. This corona thing is, in a sense, a bit of a reboot. And I think you're going to see uh, some really good things going forward. So uh, don't worry about it. It's coming up. It's coming up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ali Wahid, new AI, new AI libraries are supporting JavaScript too. Can you please help with finding a learning resource for JavaScript? JavaScript AI, I have never done, so I couldn't say. But I personally would just, if you're going to do AI, I would go with Python. You know, it's just because Python is so dominant. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with JavaScript in that regard, but you know, it's like you're 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 finding yourself in a niche situation. You know. Uh, there we go. Just received a request asking if I could build them a podcast website. What stack would you use for this? I would just use WordPress and then you got podcasting plugins galore and uh, Bob's your uncle, you know? See, this is a classic example. Everybody's thinking for freelance and coding that you're gonna be always writing from scratch. You could, you could break out Laravel and do it from scratch if you're comfortable with Laravel, you could do that. Here's a classic example. He's got a job. They want a podcast website, right? They don't want you to build Facebook here. So this is very common for small business, right? Like that's one of the things like I'm doing like for uh, Studio Web. We're going to, I haven't gotten around to it, but one of the things we're going to be doing is setting up uh, a workflow and it has to do with the website, of course, for podcasting. I want to put this up in podcast. So that, has, that, all, that all has to be configured and set up. So it's not necessarily a coding job, but it's an implementation, you know? Uh, there we go. Is Python a good choice for web development? What would be better picking between Python? I think I read this one. For freelance, I would go PHP for sure. Uh, for web, I, I just went, uh, um, for web, I just went for um, PHP because I, this PHP has much less resource intense than Python. Uh, how much time will it take to learn Python for a professional Java developer? A week at most. You're not going to know a lot of libraries, but at least, I don't know, a week maybe? It'd be pretty quick, you know? All right, Sam G.H. Hey, Stefan, you always mention WordPress development as a good choice for developers who want to specialize. What route would you take if you were learning WordPress for the first time after PHP, JS Basics? Well, I would learn WordPress, WordPress theming, and then I would just get gigs. I would just get gigs. Once you're comfortable installing WordPress, installing a theme, you understand the, uh, the WordPress loop, I think it's called. That's how uh, posts are all published. And you know, understand the new version. Just go out there and get gigs. That's it. Learn as you get paid. Learn as you get paid. All right, what else do we got here? Uh, all right, Madi Valipour. I can WordPress take 100% of web design future? No. Colleen Cole, you're a natural. That's what she said. All right, Lex, what language is most wanted for IT firms? Depends on the firm. It's larger. You're going to see Java, .NET, C Sharp, small, maybe some Python, JavaScript, Node. 
smaller PHP node. All right, Kazrex. Hello, Stefan. Is it possible to get a job or freelance work by just knowing HTML and CSS along with very good UX design skills? Yes, it is, it is. Um, if you want to really supercharge it, learn the basics of WordPress, installing it, you'll probably get a lot of jobs there. And if you're really adventurous, just learn the basics of PHP. It's going to open up the whole world for you. You know, not necessarily become a PHP coder, but just understanding server's coding. Trust me, you'll thank me when you start making a lot more money. Uh, all right. Tom Jan says, no qualifications. What would you recommend? Develop qualifications. Start learning. Build up your portfolio. And uh, away you go, Bob Gironco. All right. Grim Reaper. I like that. Uh, what? Why is Java so popular? I see the most enterprise tools use Java. Don't understand why. I can tell you because I was there when it happened. Java was the back in way back when I still uh, had very long hair. Uh, Java was the young, hot language of the time. And all the young nerds were saying, "You got to learn Java." And all the old nerds were like, "Nah, Java is slow compared to C plus plus." And Java had a lot of fits and starts. At first, they used they wanted Java to be used to do like um, visual front end type of work. So they have Java GUIs. I think AWT was one of the GUI libraries for Java, and then Swing. Then they had Java applets. All that failed for the most part, and Java became a server side thing. It's getting pretty dark in here, right? So let me see if I increase my brightness a bit. All right. Uh, so Java uh, is just was so much. Java's big advantage was you could write Java and it would run on Mac uh, servers and Linux servers and Windows servers. So uh, and it was actually pretty nimble. One of the big advantages Java had over C plus plus and C was that it uh, allowed for it. You didn't have to manage memory. It had a garbage collection, so it it cleared it cleared its own memory for you. It was very good with memory management. At the end of the day, what it came down to is you could write Java code and write apps much more quickly than you could with traditional languages. And it was cross-platform. And that's why it grew very, 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 very popular. It just got enough momentum. And that's why, by the way, JavaScript and Java, uh, JavaScript was named JavaScript because of Java, because Java had momentum. And the, and the guy who invented JavaScript, he wrote, I forget his name, he wrote it for Netscape, the very first web browser or one of the first ones, the first, I think both say, it was one of the first ones. And he wrote JavaScript because it was just for marketing. Java and JavaScript, that's the whole point. All right, somebody didn't like uh, that Java was named for JavaScript, or Java, JavaScript was named for Java. All right, uh, I was just looking at the thumbs here. Okay, hold on. Brandon, besides real projects and Git comments, is there any other ways for employers or clients to figure out if a dev just copy pasted code from other people and claim as their own? Well, that's why there's an interview process. Um, you know, certifications can help a little bit, but at the end of the day, like for instance, when I hire a guy or a girl, I question them and I see what questions they ask me. Like the last guy, the guy who's, who, who's lead on Studio Web 5, the reason I hired him because he was asking me good questions about uh, the stacks I was using. That told me he knew what he was talking about. It, that's where great communication skills come in, soft skills, right? You're gonna have to sell yourself a little bit. Stefan, that's a great name. Uh, do you think Firebase is good? Is a good backend for most websites that you would do for free to build reputation? Why not? If you're comfortable with it and uh, they're not paying you, uh, you can use whatever you want. Just let them know what you're using. I haven't used Firebase myself. I just use MySQL, probably because it's ubiquitous, but I'm sure Firebase is fine. There we go. Philippe, hi. Soft skills are always good, always. Yeah, for sure. Mm. What else? Do you have an email contact? I do, Stefan at Studio Web. Don't give it out. Uh, oh my God. What do you think, PHP or ASP? Freelance, PHP. Um, I assume when you're saying e ASP, you're talking about ASP.net, not classic ASP as they call it now. Um, if you're talking classic ASP, then definitely PHP. 
Uh, if you're doing enterprise large, then you go ASP. All right, how are you doing? Oh my God, four, 54. All right, I'm going to close this off pretty soon. We're at uh, we have 200 people, 195, 54, 55 minutes almost. I was planning on only staying half an hour. Uh, Philippe, again, I, but I bought your freelance course also, Steph. Thanks for that. Hey, great. Thanks for picking up the course. And let us know, let the group know next time I log on or when you finish uh, what kind of value you got out of that course. Let's see what else got here. Can you do a whole live stream or course on communication soft skills? That has been my biggest problem. Thanks. Man, that's a good idea. You know what? That's a good idea. I might just do that. All right. Now let me scroll, jump ahead, and I'm going to answer uh, just a handful more because my mouth is really getting dry now. Uh, it was Adani says, uh, in my opinion, I would go with JS Node, but if you are interested in AI Python, there you go. All right, oh, CoFusion. All right, let's check this out. CoFusion. I used to like CoFusion. Okay, been CoFusion dead for many years and managed custom e-commerce websites, but can't find any help. Considering switching platforms, suggestions. Yeah, CoFusion was uh, back in the uh, late '90s, early 2000s. It had a lot of buzz. And then I think a Macromedia bought it. Then I think Adobe bought it. Yeah. And uh, CoFusion basically allowed people to develop uh, full stack apps using a tag based language as opposed to writing code. But it's very powerful, very sophisticated. Lots of stuff, turnkey, easy to use. Uh, problem is not much market share. So that's the that's the classic example. If you find yourself using a niche technology you may find yourself as the owner of the code base uh, with a, a, a huge investment without enough developers to help you develop. That's a problem. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, all right. Last one here. Hey, Steph, any idea how to combine web development and data science? Um, yeah, so you do your Python. And I suppose you're doing your data science. I assume you're taking, you're learning data. You're, you are a data scientist or you're studying to be. And then you expose, uh, you know, your data science computations on the web using Python and Django or Flask. You know, that's how I look at it. That's how I would look at that. All right, for uh, Allah Buroy, Bur sorry. My bad, can't pronounce that. For portfolio to get an internship, one full stack app or many small apps with different technologies. Um, a few different clients, real clients. That's what's important. People want to see that you can actually work with uh, real businesses. All right. You know what, guys? Well, oh, I've been on 57 minutes and 54 seconds, and my mouth is really dry. So I'm going to let you go. And uh, I think we've, uh, it's been a good broadcast. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And this will be posted live. Of course, you want, if, you, if you came in uh, late, it would be posted rather on YouTube so you can watch the early part. And there you go. So I think it's, uh, it's a lock. I will be doing these on a regular basis. And um, Yep, I'll be doing these on a regular basis. I'm going to put up a uh, survey this weekend so you guys can chime in so we can figure out what is the best time to schedule these so everybody knows when they're coming on. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm at, we want Rui jokes. Well, I did a couple. You missed them. Anyway, I'll let you go, guys. Thanks for watching. It's always a lot of fun. Uh, ciao.